Number 26. For the molecule allene, which is H2CCCH2, give the hybridization of each carbon atom. Will the hydrogen atoms be in the same plane or perpendicular planes? Okay, so let's just answer the first question first. We basically have to give the hybridization of each carbon atom. Now, in order to do this, we do have to have a Lewis structure. I mean, you don't really have to do it, but in order to make it super easy for yourself, always draw out the Lewis structure. Now, they gave us the framework here, right? They did say that that middle carbon, C, had two double bonds, and because of that, this carbon is perfect, right? It's got the octet rule, and it's bound to the two other carbons. Now we just have to know, well, what type of bonds is it bound to hydrogen? Remember that hydrogen can only form one bond. So I have to have that carbon bound one time to the hydrogen and just do it again, because there's the two hydrogens. And now this carbon has the octet. It's got eight electrons, two, four, six, eight. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. So H and H. And now the, the drawing is perfect. Okay. So now we just have to give the hybridization for each carbon. All right. But now this comes down to just knowing your different hybridizations. There's a total of five hybridizations, ranging from sp all the way down to sp3d2. But in order to find out what the hybridization is, just know that it always equals to the number of letters that the hybridization has. So for example, sp2 has an s and two p's. That's a total of three letters. If I just tackle on one extra p, that's sp3, and that has a total of four letters. And the number of letters corresponds with the number of things. So two letters, two things, three letters, three things, et cetera, et cetera. And just know that one thing is either one single bond, one double bond, so even though it's two lines, it's still classified as one thing, one triple bond, and one lone pair. So let's just go from left to right. Let's just find out what the hybridization of this carbon is. Well, let's see, what has it got? Well, it's got one single bond, that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. And it's got one double bond, that's a total of one thing. So it seems like this carbon has three things. That's three letters. So three things, three letters, sp2 hybridized. Okie dokie. Let's move on to the next one. I'm just going to erase the, um, the, the, the lines to the bonds because I don't want to overlap when I'm doing this one. So now let's do this carbon. Okay, well, what's going on with that one? Well, it's got a double bond. I'm going to group that whole thing together, say that that's one thing. And it's got another double bond. That's two things. I don't see any lone pairs or anything. So I'm just dealing with two things here. Two things, two letters, SP hybridized. Cool. Now I'm just going to strip away the colorings again, because now we're going to do this carbon. How many things? Well, it's got a single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond. That's two things. And it's got a double bond. That's one thing. So it looks like a total of three things here. So the same as the first one. That's sp2. All right. So let's just strip away all this. I guess we'll just strip away this color. And now we just gave the hybridization of each carbon atom. So this carbon is sp2 hybridized. The one on the end, whoop, I'll just get rid of that. The one on the end is also sp2 hybridized. And the one in the middle is sp. So now the next question. Will the hydrogen atoms be in the same plane or perpendicular planes. Now this comes from understanding the drawings of what is actually going on here in your orbitals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the same structure, CCC, 
And we could draw the H's as well. H, H, H. Oh, it's got to be a little bit off. H and H, right? But now I'm going to draw this in terms of their bonds. So remember that when we have a double bond, that classifies as one sigma bond, and the other one is a pi bond. And just remember that the sigma bond is always way stronger than the pi bond. So the same thing goes for here. This has to be a sigma bond, and this one has to be a pi bond, aka an over an overlapping bond that's not from nucleus to nucleus. Those are your sigma bonds. So if I had to draw the bond, the double bond, between this carbon and this carbon, I will draw the sigma bond. And a sigma bond is always from center of the nucleus to the center of the nucleus, right in the middle of the lines. So maybe I will just draw this out like that. And you see how I would say that this would be the center, right? And it's literally a direct shot from nucleus to nucleus. And I'll just do the overlapping here just to kind of outline it. It's in the black outline now. Beautiful. And in the little thing that is shared, that's where your electrons are going to go. So those are your two electrons of your sigma bond. Now I just have to include the pi bond. Now the easiest pi bonds to draw are the ones that are on the top and the bottom. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And when you draw these, how they connect is you just kind of have to just draw a line that's, you know, connecting them. We'll just make it that simple. So now I'm just going to connect them. But as you can see here, your pi bonds are not from center to center. That's why they're weaker than sigma bonds because they don't have that direct connection with the nucleus. They're above and below, or in front and behind. And now you'll just pick one side to put the two electrons, and that's your pi bond. And as you can see, a total of four electrons are being shared here, and that's what a double bond is. So now let's work on the next one. I have to have a sigma bond and a pi bond. Now a sigma bond is always going to be the straight shot. So from carbon to carbon, from the center of the nucleus to the center of the nucleus, you can draw that straight shot again. So that takes care of one bond, and I'll just color it in. Wee! And I'll outline it, just to show you the overlap, and I'll put the two electrons in there. So boop boop. There's the sigma bond, and now here comes the pi bond. But, if I try to draw the same pi bond, this p orbital is ready to go, but this p orbital is already taken. It's already bound with this carbon. So can I just use it again to go to the next one? Absolutely not. Can't do that. That does not work. You're only allowed to connect between two carbons, not a total of three. So we have to take from another p orbital. That's okay, there's a total of three of them. So in this case, the harder one to draw is the one that has three-dimensional properties where it's coming out at you and going in back of you, coming out, you know, out of the page, three-dimensional, and in the back. And we draw that kind of like on a slant. So if I can, here's one of them, and I'll make it a little clearer because I'll outline this because it's in yellow. But I kind of wanted to just draw it in a different color to show you. And I'm going to make the connection and then I'll outline it. So here's the one connection, I'm drawing it and I'm drawing it over the other one because it's literally coming out at you. And the other one right here, beep, is going like this. How beautiful is that? Let me just draw it now, outline it for you. Here's the P orbital. As you can see, it's kind of like on a slant because it's going away from us. The other one is now coming in front of us. So that's why it kind of looks like this. And technically this, this part should be colored in yellow because it's technically over the green. But I guess because of the highlighting colors, maybe if I can, I will just get rid of this green. Say bye-bye to that, oh boy. 
That's good enough. And then I'll just draw it in yellow just to kind of give you the 3D. Um, you know, property. There's a little green sticking out here. And there you go. Now you have the two electrons. It doesn't matter whether you put them in the front or the back. I mean the front or the back. So maybe we'll just keep them all this way. And there is your four electrons for this. So now, would those hydrogens be on the same plane or perpendicular planes? Are these bonds the same direction or are they perpendicular to each other? Meaning that one's going in one direction up and down and the other is going out and in. Yeah, it's perpendicular planes. Good job. Because of these p orbitals. These are still going to be sigma bonds, right? So sigma them up. We can draw it like this. But basically what's happening is since you're now having something called stereochemistry, don't worry about the word, but since you're having three-dimensional uh, drawings here, the hydrogens are also going to be drawn three-dimensionally. And if we actually drew it, and maybe if I can, I'll just draw this up here. What this would actually look like is the carbon that has the double bond to the double bond. One of these lines would be on one plane, and the other ones are drawn with different lines because of your three-dimensional properties. This line is meaning coming out of the page, so going in front of you, and the other line is going away. So away from you, and maybe I'll just say that this is towards you as I write an F, toward, T, toward. And that's because of the different P orbitals that are used here. So it would be perpendicular. Perpendicular planes. And now we have answered the full question. Wowzers. What'd you think? This one was fun. I love drawing them. Hope you guys do too. Little art time, little chem. Such a beautiful thing. Have you ever seen such more of a beautiful thing? <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for viewing the video. If you knew where that was from, let me know in the comments. Um, anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. Good luck on those tests and quizzes. And if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button. It just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so, so very much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.